it is um, too smart. It, it is not um, just doing blindly uh, categories of time. It, it measures how long time you want, mm -hmm. and, and the shorter the time, the earlier you get to. But do you think that's not one bias? You can't Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I can go to share my dates in the comments. Well, not, not publicly, not here on the record, but um, So when you all are familiar with uh, you all are familiar with uh, job queuing system in uh, on Earth, right? And this morning you may have gotten you opened your uh, emails, right? The link to to the main one. And you, you remember that this um, script for any jobs, they have some strange symbol, number, or whatever, maybe something more crazier, then something like S batch, then keywords. Okay? So consider the keyword space, keyword minus a capital space, and then a number that I will share with you. Because this will go public to YouTube at the end of the So uh, there are you know, several accounts, same as the banks, and some of them have more accounts, some of them have more. You know, you know this, I don't need to repeat this. I, I do have it on the, on the laptop. I really want to show it. Otherwise, So I'm going to illustrate where it's like was was here. And this is what we will remember. And we will remember. So I am going to illustrate these equations. Um, who will need them? I can tell who may not may not need them. Uh, Braden may not need them. I will not tell that you necessarily know that. Huh? And Russell may not need them. And who is, whoever is our captain? Christian may not need them. Or all. Uh, Anyone else will likely need these equations to be included, the calculation taken equations included into your reports. Uh, who will primarily need it, for sure? London MBA and uh, Daniel will also likely need it. Those who consider interfaces. Alisa, you, you may need it as, as well. So, um,
Do you see, do you see well this, uh, the things? Okay, so it is this little comment is not implemented into the logical thread of the oral materials, but it is important practical thing. This refers back to several weeks ago when we, uh, we were discussing functional procedure and orbitals that we may need to analyze because they give insight into the uh, physical and chemical properties of your material. Especially interesting application for his uh, charge transfer at interface materials. This is important for uh, harvesting solar energy important for photovoltaics in uh, diodes and distros uh, for macro, micro electronics and also uh, reverse of that, like uh, harvest light or emit light. Um, as you know from your experience, drawing orbitals is and looking through them is also important. If you see more than 20, you get them. But sometimes you need to analyze them to get through and catch such orbitals that are localized on different species of your, of your system. It, is, uh, it would be reasonable to have a tool that allows to do that. Okay? So um, the orbitals are stored in form of cube files. Uh, partial charge density at each point of space, and those are three dimensions. We visualize them as isosurfaces. Okay. But three dimensions, it, it takes resources, uh, the files are big. What if we project this three dimension distribution into one point, expectation value of uh, orbital, the center of mass or center of charge, of your orbit. or if this is uh, too much abstract, at least we project on the z axis, so integrate over x and y. So this concept should be very familiar to you. So there are scripts, uh, two, two scripts, then integrate and, and integrate. They do the same, but they store uh, output in different formats. We then integrate, saves, uh, they both integrate over x and y and keep the orbital as function of z, but first one, then integrate. Uh, stores everything in one file, and uh, the data are arranged along rows matrix. So if you want to scan along uh, z axis and, and see your function, it will be matrix with first column corresponding to first orbit, second, second. Um, and if you want to immediately use some simple floating tools like uh, Excel, Unplot, Origin, it, sometimes it is more common to arrange data in columns. Well, if you're in MATLAB, you can transpose it immediately, but what if you hate MATLAB or you don't have license at the server where you work? So the second one stores the data corresponding to one dimensional orbital along column and it is one file uh, in the second version is one file per one orbit so um, <clears throat> and the second one is more user friendly so you do not need to, to do anything you just run Um, so if you want to have this array, the first one, that sets them as rows, you need to open file and look for, for a cycle and uh, we input the number of starting and ending orbital. And what script does, it, it goes over, integrate each of orbital and uh, adds them into, into the file. So the example 
was taken from the director of London. They found where your purchase files are. Why is it? No, uh, no, for, for head jobs. Okay. So here are articles, uh, and after changing, so um, I did check the whole response to the number for ages and didn't want to waste time for all of it. So I started a little earlier and a little later. So when you need to type Perl in front of this uh, script, and when it runs, and when it is completed, there there appears file went out. So this file went out will contain first line is uh, dating a function of z for this orbital, second line dating a function of z for this orbital, and, and so forth. When you uh, eventually work with about 100 orbitals, this will be the best possible. But if you if you are doing something uh, quick, if you want to inspect just a couple of them, then you are running this uh, second script incomplete and incomplete. So after spaces, you put the first and last orbital. Uh, it will read this as an, as an input, and when it runs, it just gives parameters and it converts the file uh, for charge uppercase, which has a uh, three dimension distribution, into for charge lowercase, which contains only one dimension distribution. Okay? And saves it as, as home. <coughs> so they are here. This was done five minutes before the uh, start of lecture, therefore it is not in graphical shape, but dumb form of terminal, terminal if you know that and you move faster. So this is plotting all this uh, far charge orbitals corresponding to column and woman. The first column corresponding to the value of Z coordinate. Second column corresponds to the charge density. If you put if you put first versus second, it will have your x axis equals to z axis and then standard figure. But sometimes I don't know, you do whatever you like. Uh, some people are have their preferences. Here is what two versus one. So this is z axis and this is charge density. So it is made in, uh, in order to put the three-dimensional charge density to the side to compare whether they agree. And this too is used and needed in order to avoid plotting and watching many orbitals and select which ones of them you really need. So uh, the stars and uh, numbers correspond to home and war. And if you see, they are localized in different spatial areas. Which means that if you prepare your system in the lowest excited state of charge being promoted from form to woman, it will correspond to charge transfer. Which is a very good news. This is a preferred configuration for photovoltaics, for short period. It's Something that you may want to see. And whoever is here in this I'm the doctor, will probably complement this reading, review reading this figure in the final resolution and complement it with three dimensional eye surface to check that if this hypothesis is, is correct. Any questions on, on this little uh, script? Could this apply to minor and Maybe. You may, is it only in one, one direction? Yes, and you can select your direction where um, if your model is aligned along Z, or if, if even if it is not, you can rotate it so it is aligned along Z. Okay. And uh, identify if... Uh, based on localization of charge for specific orbitals, one can also predict reactivity or interpret it. 
like um, if you have um, so typically the occupied orbitals are localized on uh, oxygen if oxygen is uh, present and if you artificially remove electron by, by some reason from oxygen it means it will uh, become much more reactive and aggressive so from from uh, this analysis you may get additional insight do not put it as a top priority but if you um, try to interpret whatever you get and uh, get stuff maybe this this may help questions you will be able to repeat it here so this uh, i'll share the slides and uh, i think we are on, on, on the right, right one Not waiting time. Thank you for your question. So uh, we did consider implementation of this equation where you have three dimensional distribution and you integrate over x and y. You do your uh, research and put it in group or in report and put this equation in the this way. So integrated along z. And but uh, those one dimensional lines are much cheaper. You can do like hundreds of those five to one and select which one are most interesting and then uh, do this time resolution something that uh, is uh, for sure important. For okay. We are, where, where are they? Who did miss this question? Only one? You have heard about the time event. And uh, this was most important uh, picture to review from our last meeting. So there are two different ways to look on excited states. Before this book, you were thinking of excitations as pairs of occupied and unoccupied orbitals. And uh, when we are doing some CDBT um, theory, we have ground state and several excitations. In the simplest form situation, lowest excitation can be decomposed as a pair of uh, one pair of orbitals. But more frequently, it is more than one pair. Who designed this equation? If you if you do something with uh, uh, excited states, you may mention in your uh, reports. <coughs> you've done this specific question. Also, what is is there any connection between what we do here uh, in class and your uh, research projects? You are very busy. You are busy. 
people in, uh, on, on the road, especially those who take about 20 trays or grade about 200 uh, light bulb parts. But if you really have steam and you have nothing to do, and you want to invest all of your energy towards projects, when we, so we have three segments here, characterizing initial, running molecular dynamics, and then characterizing pilots. So at the stage of characterization, no one forbids you to run TLDFT for your model, if you want to. It's not required, but if you do not trust results from uh, pairs of orbitals, sometimes it's possible. Especially for small models. So this is eigenstate equation. The formula is uh, transition frequencies, excitation uh, transition energies for excitations, and uh, what are x and y? It was uh, two meetings ago, so I don't want to show you. What x and y stands for? Uh, the transition. Yes. This A and B. Um, in, if the uh, different forms of forming direction are absent, if charge carriers do, do not interact, then these coefficients will reduce just to energy difference between uh, independent orbitals. But as soon as we go further, approach further to the Swiss, there, there is a thermodynamic interaction that modifies excited states to form a bound uh, transition. And as always in DFT, instead of taking these integrals directly, which is uh, expensive, one uh, does the derivative of uh, energy over uh, functional derivative of, over density. And since it is not ground state but excited state, there is second derivative. And last, probably it was the last thing before we departed uh, on Tuesday. Vijay has uh, discovered a way how to convert transition density into transition diagram. So um, you have either seen or you will see very soon in uh, physical chemistry one that uh, expectation value of observable is either Brian uh, cap of an operator or it is <laughs> trace of density operators times uh, operator. Okay. And uh, if one takes simplest example of density matrix, which includes n elements only for occupied and unoccupied, the uh, transition density is represented only by one element. And uh, transition type of operator has a form of nothing on, on the diagram. So implementation of a protocol to find expectation code, second one, other than bright uh, shows that transition dipole depends only on values of uh, off diagonal elements of density matrix of transition density. So in summary, based on this derivation by J. Transition density defines transition type. Okay. And as soon as you have the transition type, you can find the small response. So it is what, uh, uh, how it is what is inside the black box named uh, TDDT. So we do have two alternatives to compute the observable structure. One is based on independent orbital approximation, where one uses different energy difference of set of pairs of orbitals and also different pairs of orbitals. Or we have transition 
energies and oscillator strengths for transitions number subsidies. So in TDMT, you don't have for them, you, have, you count just transitions. Same thing. Um, once before the end of the course, we will work on the example how to run TDT in uh, Gaussian. It is not implemented in Rust because TDT doesn't like to really well with conditions. And uh, <coughs> some of you practicing it every day, some of you. May see it for the first time today, which we just tried not to touch other way of doing it. So, when you uh, go into setup of Gaussian input file, you put td equals syntax and root number how many excited states you want, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. N states? Huh? Yeah. Should, should they be the same? Or deep, deep the 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 so what is the difference? I don't know what root is. Which uh, value do you put? N state equals like 100. And root equal? I don't. Okay, if uh, if you skip, uh, then uh, they, they are put uh, the same. Uh, if you do excited state optimization, it, uh, you specify which, which one is your value. So when you run, Gaussian for TDDFT. It is what you are getting in your work. You parse, and uh, when we will be doing in the lab, I will share the script, or you will have script for this, but basically you look into the dot work file and parse the keyword excited state. Then the count of first, second, okay. and uh, it does show the uh, transition energy in the same uh, wavelengths and oscillator strengths. So if you want to go quicker, you need to parse uh, this column of numbers and this column of numbers. Make sense? Um, then, after this information which is needed for us, there is some uh, information that is just interesting for interpretation. There is a information how the excited state is decomposed over elementary excitation, over flavors of form. So for lowest and first excitation, it shows 24 to 25. So on, uh, primarily it is composed of transition for form of DNA. But for the second excited state, it is equally composed of uh, homo minus one to rho and to rho plus one. Not equally, but at some uh, proportion. To further, we may identify in this segment of work file uh, how many orbitals and in which proportion contribute to the excited state. So we skip diagonal element and focus only on the both diagonal. And uh, these elements correspond to, to values of this uh, transition density matrix with understanding that the transition density matrix is defined separately for each excitation. Right? It is eigenvector of excitation. As many excited states you find, as many transition density matrix you will have. So for the lowest excitation, it needs all of them zero except this homo luma uh, transition uh, element of the transition density matrix. We will go to the second. Then you have something from uh, homo minus one to luma and from homo minus one to luma plus one. Right? So these two will be not zero. And others will be zero. Most likely, for, for, for most of 
practical applications we do not need it, but you feel a little better if you uh, keep track of what is going on. Yes, yes. And then if you parse this uh, information about uh, transition images, right, you can also uh, cover it, dress it with uh, profile, with kind of that stuff. Um, so here it appears at 3. Uh, Strange hub, which is very adequate for Titanium Basin. Remember, once we were doing this model in uh, ground state DFT and estimated the transition energy just as difference of uh, first, you, you did it with, you did this model in uh, Karsik Rock, right? I bet we did because it is so, so appetizing and so small to, to try it for everything. And the gap was about 12. Okay. With DFT, it, it was a little bit. When you use this same function as the DFT, it uh, stabilizes it closer to reality. And uh, it's a big, for some people, it is a big fun to change functions and see how much it stabilizes or destabilizes uh, bound state. Who's favorite equation of this? <laughs> yes, good question. One, what is the S squared that would mean? I don't know. <laughs> And then um, on the previous slide, uh, you had roots and end states be different. Why, yes. did, why did you choose to? I'll, I'll tell you if I <coughs> catch more thoughts. So here uh, is the artistic painting from the website of the designer of the film. And uh, he's welcome in French because he's, he works in, in Canada. And here's one of the equations that sets up this. this um, there were several people who were targeting the, the same um, goal to describe uh, excited states and um, alternative. Um, there are many names. He just uh, formulated the most um, condensed form that uh, helps to, to understand it in, in shortest period of time. But uh, it was like a community hunt for a question like this. And sometimes you can meet him in a conference. So here is a summary of what we went through. And, uh, um, okay. The plan was to feel the view. The plan was to fill the, the um, what we are usually feeling full chart, right? I, have, I was planning to distribute it so that everyone will, uh, will feel it, but since I made this mistake, we need to go one by one to the board. <laughs> <laughs> I will not make it setting it up. I printed it. 
So, um, regularly, the Kolsham equation is time independent, right? It looks like Schrodinger equation for any state. But all of this. But generally, everything is time dependent. If you, you can, by analogy to Schrodinger time dependent Schrodinger equation, you can formulate time dependent Kolsham equation. Just uh, instead of Hamiltonian in both stars and this equals uh, eigenstate, most energy, you can put the time evolution of your time zone further depends on uh, this uh, potential kinetic energy acting on, on, this, uh, on this function. So this is starting point. Then you look how the uh, potential is affected by the change in the density. If we are uh, away from the ground state, if, if you are it's, it's So if change in the, if you listen this line, we are jumping from time dependent picture to time independent picture, assuming that all changes in time are harmonic, that you can do Fourier transfer. So you, you need just amplitude of oscillations. If you, if you leave time dependent thing, we multiply uh, oscillations times uh, exponential with the whole thing. And this frequency dependent change uh, of, of the density is pair of occupied and unoccupied orbitals times the proportionality weight coefficient, which proportion this uh, pair of orbitals contributes to the change of the density. Since we are running only over one index over occupied and over occupied, this is not all orbitals, but only orbitals that uh, give us transition density. So indices do not coincide. And if we go from occupied to unoccupied, it's uh, one thing. If you go from unoccupied to occupied, it is another thing. And don't quote them uh, X and Y. And uh, they are, they need to be searched in the uh, eigenstate, eigenstate equation. Our coefficients can be found um, based on knowledge of the of the potential, so uh, functional derivatives. What should I tell you? We are solving against the problem, which is typically formulated as matrix times vector, but we need to find density, which is matrix. Therefore, we reformulate our unknown matrix as a vector and the stuff that actually, as uh, before it was four dimensional object, now we can rearrange indices that will be the two dimensional matrix on the vector. And, um, so, here are things that we need to uh, fit into, into the flowchart. As an output, we need transition energies and uh, transition formula, right? In one hour, please. Transition densities and oscillator spans. As an input, you select uh, your number of uh, excited states, covariance limit, and parameters of your, of your model, addition spans, and number of matrix. And then you um, solve your possible equation, plug in the transition densities into the equation that gives you total density, and then you can. Uh, um, Extract observables from the density and check if you match the tolerance limit. Oh, 
the same time. So same as in the DFT, you need to guess random density when you start guessing. So to to have density through this formula. Then as soon as you have some density, you can formulate your A and B coefficients based on, uh, on, on the density. And then you can solve the Cassidy equation. And uh, for, uh, from the Cassidy equation, you can check if your transition energy converges. But you are starting from the lowest excitation and you uh, repeat this procedure until it converges. So you repeat, repeat here, repeat it. And as soon as it uh, converges, uh, one goes into into next state and uh, may repeat. So um, all the, the density is updated with taking into account uh, several states. And as soon as this uh, cycle is uh, converged, one can uh, take all of the transition densities for each state that we uh, consider, convert it into transition dipole. And uh, saves the output energies and those split as well that one uses for uh, when it's better. Couple of years ago, it was less much. But uh, we have a few, few more, so we will entertain you more. But uh, we can summarize what we did uh, up to now. So uh, at the beginning, we started with molecular Hamiltonian and uh, Boyle and Hammer separation in chapter one, right? So we discussed that there is a way to reduce overall freedom of equation for all degrees of freedom. One to help make a neutral degree of freedom and the neutral degree of freedom one can often adopt classical approximation, think that all uh, ions are going charges and you still will be able to describe most of the processes. Then we spent a month in Carter Fox, which brings up the concept of background field of all but one reactions. And then we spent most of the time for uh, this ground state DFT that uses what some main idea of DFT. Fingerprint. <laughs> the density determines on all observables. Not only all observables, but also positions of atoms and all properties of molecules. And logically, it is not because the density is sorted, but because it is imprinted on this. In the case of density, one can just <laughs> and uh, finally, we, and finally, we considered one of the theories for uh, excited states. Uh, the time allows to her, and I would like to uh, introduce the uh, configuration of direction, which will make everything probably better. And in the practical skills, we use atomic models, geometry, Ionization energy, spectra, molecular dynamics, and somewhere should be objects. And mo most pleasant and interesting things is to make words. Basically, maybe the next year you will rename the course uh, Atomistic Words. <laughs> <laughs> Enough for today. Any questions are welcome. I will stay here to upload stuff in the chat. And uh, please send me email reminders if your um, jobs that you submitted in the queue bother you. If you think it should be complete by now and it is not. 
the request to the point for SFH minus A is a secret number. Anyth anything else we need to discuss? Let me just just focus. Um, I need to be on travel on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <coughs> but there is this end of uh, semester and we need to, to be intense. So I will either hook up to your uh, uh, online connection or um, send here very soon a proposal to the travel information, whatever you need over there. So we will be doing uh, the lab. This lucky number 13. Uh, the idea is that your molecular dynamics will be done by them and you will invest time into uh, characterizing the system, putting orbitals, as we discussed at the beginning of today's meeting, making spectra, and uh, preparing the data for uh, uh, written reports. So, so summarizing graphical information in the digestible form. And the very last then um, tentatively May 1st we will uh, it will be Tuesday. We will bring the drafts of the written reports in class. Show this how how long from now. <laughs> so it's roughly, well, it's uh, four to seven figures, all geometries, all density of states, all spectra, all orbitals, maybe something else. Right? And some uh, uh, hand waving for the intern. I, I will tell what to place into reports if you have no idea. It's uh, my favorite subject of presentation of the test slide. Some of you may have seen it in uh, if you saw it in uh, in one. But we will be at least we will be in one single test. <laughs> and the May first is We will check that everyone has um, movies. Everyone is able to uh, insert them in the program. <coughs> oh, when is the dead week? Dead week. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we will finish on May, May 3rd. Right? And next week we will be fine. After that. So, uh, the intention is that unless something bad happens, uh, you will be done with the course uh, before the finals, and then there will be no finals. The finals will be oral presentations on May 3rd. So on uh, Tuesday, May 2nd, we complete the written report, and we will do self editing session here in class. I think we, we make sure that everyone has worked the movie. And on Thursday, May 3rd, everyone will present or whatever it means. And then we will finish each other a bit. Anything else? You, you need to relax. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting is done. Should I be doing the spin polarized that speed states in this learning of things? Or is that not really necessary? Jay, you need to. No, no one needs me. <laughs> How many occurrences in this? Just a second. And like, uh, and it looks like we were not recording today.
which you're doing for Rube because it was much more best. <laughs> um, how many electrons? Yes. Uh, Even I, odd. I think it was odd. I can't remember. Yes, remove yeah. five electrons. Okay. When you do standalone silicon, keep it neutral. Mm -hmm. When you do combined system or uh, standalone silver, remove five electrons. Okay. And for, uh, the first paper I sent you yesterday in the, in the list uh, gives justification. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> we work with those screen in your case. Okay. So uh, do not waste time. And system, your system is not super huge, but it is large enough so it uh, uh, works well on some of the HPC. So you, you better focus on. Uh, um, I was looking at the system and it looks under optimized, especially with hydro Okay. Um, if you, again, you all are very busy, especially with this. But uh, if you better have. At first, at a zero approximation of the form. And if you, if you have time, maybe the one that is before and you can optimize it for again and again. Oxygen from the hydroxyl group may. Decide that they like either bind to lead ions on, on the perovskite surface or uh, bromine on the perovskite surface. So the whole thing may uh, sh browse and shift until it finds its uh, optimal place. Okay. And if it finds this uh, optimal place, <coughs> even the rate later on, if we continue on this project, rate of charge transfer will be more efficient. Mm -hmm. So it is not like must, but uh, there are benefits of. Export optimization. Okay. So should I just do that right in the main folder and just keep like copying the concar into postcar every time? Or yes. Uh, and just kind of just keep rerunning it in the same directory. Uh, for like for optimization, we run in the same directory. For all other jobs, if you do anions, mm -hmm. anions, molecular dynamics, uh, spectra, partial charge densities, try to right. Otherwise, it will be a bit mess. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking if I should be doing that in order to do the other stuff, then I, should, I might as well just do that right in the main directory where everything else like, stems from. It's, it's your, uh, I, I'm, I'm not micromanaging whatever, whatever you're trying to push. Okay. I mean, as long as that's not going to hurt anything. Um, <laughs> if, if you're not, as long as you are in your sub director and you do not affect anyone else in the group. <laughs> yeah, this, um, I, there, there are some shortcomings of, of using the same account because right now we all are in the same board, and if someone feels uncomfortable, and can put this board to sync for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you are not polite to me. I <laughs> erase your files. <laughs> do not do it. Star ball and put it on the USD. <laughs> Thank you. Huh? 
<laughs> it gives all four time timings, like four time, CPU time, uh, the end of four time. No, no, it, it, it is when you run it, the operations. Mm. You know where your directories are on your list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means I just didn't have enough room. Oh, let's. Um, right now, I will prefer not as a scientist. It's even medical. <laughs> um, I was so surprised when I talked to my friends. This I don't like to know why this is best. No, what do you put it to? Um, shift and shift. Oh, I had to Um, the, the optimization one is just like that. You can uniquely just show um, the name that you understand it. Steps just in case. Um, it's better to successfully complete less steps. Now.
Not sure this means. It doesn't matter if it is in uh, your short and your years to use really important. For those saving to come for more use. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't start yet, but uh, it should be uh, set in, in the queue and control. Should I just run through the sending text and read out and say that? Well, I'll keep my log running. Yes, yes, do it, do it. We need the jobs from, from the queues because we are still against the new resource and we have a set of competition between the old. Yeah. <laughs> and then how will I know when it's a like it converged to what they had? Yeah. I mean the question for the answer is probably broken. <laughs> One more than the other. Suppose we are first hundred thousand potential. If the whole finishes in its normal formulation before it hits the maximum number of steps, then it means it has conversion. So the job can terminate in, in three cases. First, it is Broke the you just didn't have enough time, you request half an hour of job. Otherwise, you run 10 hours, so you just terminate the job function. Another one, you do not have restrictions on the queuing system, you just terminate because uh, you requested 10 steps and you have to wait for 10 steps. And thirdly, suppose you have a long queue, you requested 10 steps, but it Finished itself in five steps because it reached the convergence between the other five steps. You will see in the early minutes that yet we both come to the approach to the stage of panicking as a group under problems. We can right now we have two big modules like hydro pivot for the storage on the outside and hydro product for the hydro pivot for the storage chart. There is two heavy movements we have hydro product in vacuum, hydro pivot is part of the system that is quite small and it will have to be quite Yeah, but then it I think I think this will be okay. I mean, I didn't even check on it for the mm -hmm. which is which is fine. Um, well, 
Start with from zero two, you can then go to twenty four, you can then go to twenty six. You can then go to just you increment to go to uh, you can get more than four, then it doesn't make sense. Okay, um, and then I think that's all I have. Okay, well, I can I don't know what is going on. Maybe, maybe I was submitting jobs when everyone in California was asleep. They have two hours difference and do it at night or early morning. And now everybody's awake and working. <laughs> yes. It's okay. It's not a big deal. I just, it's just not going to happen when it's on, on our, our MC cast. It's not going to work. So fast it work. Well, I mean, it's working, but like you saw that it only configured it for one, one. Uh, so Cicast is also not quick enough. Well, I mean, or USD. So. Uh, because Cicast is a little better than Salesforce, but still no comparison. Yeah. Well, I think it'll be okay once the docs are done. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's that. Maybe it's just that I'm sure people are like. Yes, we, we can watch what other people are doing. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Um, so here. Yes. 
<laughs> nice. All right. Well, I was kind of fast. <laughs> Thanks for interest and investment of time. <laughs> I mean, this project is super interesting. It's just like I, I wish that I had more free time to, you know. So you will come, um, complain, same as Levi, why didn't you start it from the beginning <laughs> of the semester? I mean, it would have been nice to, like, to spend like a little bit of my time on it but if you didn't give us this like push of time we would have just like slacked off anyways it, it, we were building like basement fun, fundamentals yeah um yeah. i was trying to involve like uh undergraduate researchers in in, in this in this form of uh, projects without course just sitting together and waiting because it's like 30 hours of lecturing, I wouldn't be able to do it one-to-one. -one. And this background information in class helps. I, I believe it helps a lot. I think it helps. I mean, I, a lot of the equations are still not, like I couldn't derive them and I couldn't tell you what parts were. Uh, but when I look at them, I like somewhat understand them and then it helps a lot, I think. And slowly but surely you develop like logical path, how yeah. they're connected and you understand what they're doing, not blindly, but uh, in organized, organized way. <laughs> yeah, even if I don't understand the equations, at least I know that they exist, you know. Yeah, so. that's, that's a good way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you next week. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank
Um, so I last summer, no, this, no last summer, I told me that yeah. something the summer is supposed to actually be. Well, what see number one, you don't need to worry about the summer stuff. Third is what issue is there in the world? Okay. Okay, so what I'm trying to Okay, I'll tell you the issue, but I want to know if it's if it's the direction I want to go. How easy is it for you to solve this topic first? So that means you should either once you have a topic that you are interested in. Mm -hmm. Then the topic has been approved by your advisor. Then the second step is what model are you going to use to address the issue? I know I have all that. I want to see if it's easier when you're solving um, a second issue. How many did you solve it, and how easy was it? It is not easy. That is what I'm telling you. you so need the only response. Exactly, that's why the so you need to change your direction. Like what? Like, say if they didn't respond as much as you wanted, did you change the direction of your project or set? No, I did not. If I change, then I have to do things all over. That's what I'm asking because I don't want to get into that hole. Then that is why, listen to me very carefully, that is why I identified an issue, mm -hmm. I identified a model. Mm -hmm. My advisor was uh, comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. During my defense, my model, the uh, committee said it is a very good model, but why don't you add this? Mm -hmm. So, in a proposal, anything can change. Mm -hmm. But once the proposal is approved, it's a contract between you and your committee. Mm -hmm. So, Number one, if you are doing a survey, you need to identify what kind of communities are you trying to send your survey to. So I'm trying to send to So these three groups are how many? How many individuals? Oh, I know for a sample to count is actually yeah, 30. So, yeah, but the 30 Bukala, no, so you're looking for a 90. So what is the likely out of 90? What is I don't know how much you will get. So let's so say ben, I, I want uh, 30, so you send out times, times 10 of that. So you mean 30 times 10 is 300? Mm -hmm. So what 300, if you send 300, how are, how many are you expecting? Like how many are you expecting to get? At least to worst case scenario, no lower than 30. Then if you're okay with 30, then the model that you are using, mm -hmm. The sample size, the sample size of your model, if you're using statistics, then this will suffice. Mm -hmm. Because statistics you're doing in the creations, the rule of statistics is your sample size should be less or equal to 30. Mm -hmm. So this flies. Did you say less or more? Statistically speaking. And it's supposed to be greater than or equal to what? This is if you're using a regression. If 
you're using a chi-square, if you're using multiple regression, simple regression, the model that you use also detects the sample size. So that means then you're doing statistics. Really. No, of course, I'm not just statistics. 